Welcome to Excel 2010 statistics video number 11. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Excel 2010 Chapter 1, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to, we're in Chapter 1 and we're talking about what is statistics. Now, statistics, well, we could think of a single number, for example. A statistics can be a numerical fact like Google has a 5% return last month. Or a test average uh, in, a in a class like this is 79 points. Those are both called statistics, right? We have uh, a single number and we, we, we get statistics thrown at, at us all the time. But what about statistics as a discipline? Let's look at the definition we're going to use in this class. The art and science of collecting, analyzing, presenting, and interpreting data. Now, let's just go through this uh, definition one word at a time and look at it. The art and science. Now, wait a second, art? I, I would think of statistics like math, right? You, you do the math, there is an answer. Well, what art is there in that? Well, in statistics, there uh, is very much an art. Statistics is not like math in that sense. For example, in next chapter, we'll create frequency distribution. And there is a real art to deciding how to group the data. And actually, I'll show you an example in just a moment. Let's see, art and science. Well, science we would expect, right? Uh, science because it, uh, we'll use scientific methods of experiment and probability, right? All sciences use these types of uh, um, methods to take past data, organize it in some way, run some reasonable test, and then come out with some reasonable conclusion. And we'll do that in this class. So you'd expect science, right? Then of collecting and analyzing, presenting, and interpreting data. Well, of course, you have to collect it. Whether you're Amazon or Google or a small business, you're collecting data. Even if you're a business collecting your own data, you still can go out there and get other data that relates to your business. Analyzing, that just means looking at the data, organizing it in some ways, noticing patterns, trends, etc. Presenting, that's making charts or tables of summary data. And then interpreting, that's taking the analyzing, the presenting, interpreting in some way to make some decision. So that's a pretty useful definition. Now I want to take a look at the art and science of, uh, on, of statistics. I'm going to scroll over here. Let's click on the sheet called Art. Art. Here we have a data set. And we want to look at the sales column. And we want to count how many sales we had between 0 and $500, 500 and 1,000, 1,000 and 1,500. Now, the, this process of counting in groups, we'll learn next chapter. We'll learn that it's called a frequency distribution for quantitative data. But I want to show you here, and this is kind of in super fast motion here. Next chapter, we'll go a little bit slower and talk about more details. But I want to show you one aspect of this process that's art. I'm going to create a pivot table. I'm going to go up to Insert, Pivot Table, Pivot Table. I'm going to say on a new sheet, click OK. I'm going to double click the sheet and call it Pivot Table 1. I'm going to drag the sales number to the row. Well, that's ridiculous. Drag the sales number to the values, but no way. We can come over to this column, this uh, row area, and right click group. And lo and behold, we can say the starting point is 0, the ending value is 2,000, and the increment is 500. The methods for deciding where to start, where to end, and what the increment are, we'll learn next chapter, but it's all art. It can change, even though we're going to have some general procedures for how to decide where to start, where to end, and what the increment is, it's not set in stone. There's gray area in, in how you decide how to group and present your data. I'm going to click OK. <laughs> that is just amazing. I mean, Pivot, just the pivot table aside, that's amazing how fast that was. But let's just do some art. Right click, group, 
250. Boom. That is an example of art. Even though we have procedures for how we should do this, there's, there are general guidelines. Ultimately, when you're deciding how to present your data, that is an example of art. All right, now we want to go look at an example of science. Let's go over to the production sheet, the sheet tab called production. Um, that's the production sheet. Now, science in chapter nine, we'll see how to do hypothesis testing. Now, check this out. This is totally exciting. Let's imagine we are a uh, uh, running a company that fills cereal boxes. So we have a machine, right? So we have to see whether the machine is filling accurately or, or not, right? So we're going to take some sample box weights to see if the filling machine is filling accurately. Now we'll see how to do all these awesome calculations and setting up of the experiment in uh, chapter 9. We, we ran the sample. We, we uh, actually looked at the machine and found out, oh, there's lots of different weights. Each box is filled with a different rate. Now we'll be able to run this experiment, look at a chart like this, and compare Here's a p-value. Here's our level of significance. Now, the p-value is way bigger than the level of significance. So the, we can assume that the machine is filling accurately. A picture of this would be, and this is using probability theory, theory, probability theory the blue area from negative infinity to right there is much bigger than our alpha. That means the machine at least it's reasonable to assume that the machine is filling accurately. Now, as we run our uh, the machine over the days and weeks, we ha might have different samples. And I'm hitting the F9 key to randomize this data. Oh, no. Now, on the chart, you can't see it at all. But here you can see p-value, 0 0.027, uh, level significance, uh, 0 0.05. So this is smaller. So that means we are in trouble using this type of uh, experimentation of probability theory, we would then reasonable to assume that the machine is not filling uh, accurately, and we'd have to shut down the machine and uh, you know fix the parts so that it is filling correctly. That's an example of science and techniques we'll do in chapter uh, nine. By the way, this is also a great example. Here is our data set. This is the raw data. We've uh, organized it in some way, right? We've analyzed it and come to some reasonable conclusion and interpreted the data to, to tell us that the machine is not uh, working properly. Let's go back over here to what is statistics. So that was a great example of uh, collecting, right? We did a sample, analyzing it, presented it, we did a chart, and interpreting. We need to shut down the machine. Now, just to end this video, I want to show you a couple other examples. I'm going to go over to the sheet called Accounting. And again, I'm going to do this in high speed mode. But in Chapter 7, we'll talk about sampling. So accountants and auditors, uh, they have a huge transaction list. And say they want to uh, analyze some invoices, right? And so they have the invoice number and the amount. Uh, and so they want to extract every six record. They don't want to look through all of them. They want a sample. So here's you'd set something like this up, and you'd run advanced filter. And there it would be. You'd instantly extract that number, that number, that number uh, in a nice little list. And this is just a small data set. You, would, you might have, you know, 10 or 20 other columns here when you extract the data, and then you go through and, and look at each one uh, for auditing purposes. Uh, if we go over to the sheet called Finance, in Chapter 5, we'll see how to uh, estimate our uh, future stock return. So estimates for stock A, we would look at probabilities of states. Economy uh, are estimations of what the stock should return. And to figure out together what our expected return is, we'd have to multiply these two together and then add, multiply these together and add, multiply these together and add. And we'll see how to use the sum product function to simply make our life easier. And again, chapter 5 will go super slow through this, explain all of the reasoning and ideas behind it. Um, and then we'll be able to make this type of calculation. Another example, 
in marketing, and this is something we uh, actually already did in our first video and we'll do in uh, next chapter also. We saw last chapter, chapter 00, if you have a column of data, you always have a field name at the top, and then each, uh, all the rows are records or observations. And we want to simply count. So we learned how to use the count if function, right? So we have this whole range with all of the data. I'm going to click there and control shift down arrow, F4 to lock it, because we're going to copy it down, comma, and our criteria is the Toyota. So right now, it's simply saying go through there and count all the Toyotas. If I enter this with control enter and copy it down. I can see there's five Toyotas, four Hondas. Now I'm going to add all this up. And we can calculate still further um, percentage, re percentage frequency, or what's called relative frequency. Again, jumping way ahead. This is all next chapter. We take the individual part and we compare it to the whole. And I'm going to lock that with the F4 key. Copy it down. And I'm going to add these up. This is great. Uh, last time we copy this down here, which of course gives us 100%, which is true, right? If we have the right total there, that'll give us 100%. But, ah, check this out. Notice how we added here. We can also add here to check and make sure our calculation is correct, because all of these, these are mutually exclusive categories, which means we only have one, two, three, four possibilities in this column here. There's only four cars. Because these are mutually exclusive categories, when you add up all of the percentages, boom, you better get 100% or 1. So this is done often in marketing, right? You want to figure out what percentage of the total um, you sold for Honda. So that's, again, <clears throat> an example in marketing. Lots of other examples uh, throughout the class. All right, in this video, we just kind of saw our definition of statistics. When we come back in our next video, we will talk about data sets uh, extensively uh, that we're going to use in this class and the terminology. All right, see you next video.